Hi and welcome to another Watch Geek video. Today we'll be taking a detailed look at the second model from Axios that I feature on my channel, the Pathfinder, a 1940s inspired field watch with modern proportions and materials. Although the look is vintage inspired, the watch is a great example of a modern everyday watch starting from dimensions that are pretty much perfect at 40mm in diameter and 47 lug to lug and moving to the materials used, all steel case and bracelet, a flat sapphire crystal and finishing with a very legible dial, regardless of which color you choose. Unlike most field watches that usually come in all brushed or bead blasted case finish, this one is a combination of brushed and polished surfaces, which makes it less boring and thanks to the finish quality, elevates the watch somewhat. The brushing is pretty consistent and well done, while the polishing is excellent with crisp and clear transitions between the two. It really makes the watch pop, while the mostly brushed top surfaces should handle scratches well. The dial on both the black and white model comes with a grainy finish, which in my opinion looks better on the white model as it kind of reminds you of snow from afar, while on the black one you get the feeling of sandpaper. The markers are applied on all versions and filled with loom. I especially like the fact the markers and hands are silver on the dark dialed versions while gunmetal grey on light colored ones to increase the contrast and legibility. It shows attention to detail and I respect that. Overall the markers and hands are very well finished with almost no imperfections, even though I noticed a bit of corrosion on the white one under macro. But this is a pre-production prototype that goes around, so god knows what it went through before reaching me. I had a similar situation with a watch I reviewed that had mold from form inside, which I later found out was a result of water damage due to one of the reviewers submerging the watch with the crown open. So I'm guessing this one went through a similar situation. The bracelet like I said is made of steel and features solid links and links and a machined clasp. The smaller links make it very comfortable while feeling massive. The lack of a glide lock styled sizing and somewhat sharp outer edges are the only thing stopping me from calling it perfect, but considering the price it is more than acceptable. With $339 at retail or all the way down to $249 if you join their Kickstarter page, this watch is pretty much everything you expect at that price, including the movement used. A Seiko NH35 that comes with both hacking, hand winding and beats away at 21,600 bph. I personally like the watch and my only remark is down to the size of the minute hand. It is not super short to the point of becoming unacceptable, but I wish it was just a tad longer to reach the minute track. But other than that I like it a lot, as it is simple, well made and very legible in pretty much any condition. Even the loom is pretty strong considering it is sand colored. I'm always amazed at how well a watch can be constructed and finished for such a low amount of money, and I'm happy to see micro brands that raise the bar of what, what is acceptable at certain price points, as it makes you start questioning the actual value of well known brands. In other words, if you're not a watch snob and don't care about the history of a brand, the world is getting better for you with every passing day, as micros are becoming excellent at what they do. Well thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and until the next video, bye.